Today on Cryptic Mass Guitar, we do a comparison between the Epiphone Les Paul Special Satin E1 and the Gibson Les Paul Tribute. I'd like to start things out by quickly saying, this video is for fun. Chill out. But I know what the top three comments are going to be uh, because this is Epiphone against Gibson. You're going to hear three different comments. You're going to hear the Epiphone is way better than Gibson. Epiphone is cheaper than Gibson. You don't need to spend all that money and it's way better crafted. QC issues all over the map. And then the other one's going to be Gibson is way better than Epiphone. Epiphone's all Chinese. They're custom shops in China. I like spending more money. Brrr. And then the third one is going to be the canoe in the background that just goes, they both suck. But I'm going to be doing five sound samples today. The first of which is going to make everybody happy, of course. And that's going to be clean with the bridge, middle, and then the neck. And then there's going to be some other sound samples. And because it's this channel, we're going to end things on full on metal. Now, sound samples and YouTube videos are fantastic because you get to, you know, see the guitars in action. You can hear some of the differences and stuff like that, even though there's compression going on during the YouTube videos and stuff like that. But I really recommend before you make the decision on purchasing one of these guitars or any guitars in general, don't just do it based off of how it sounds in a YouTube video or how it looks in a YouTube video. Make sure you're going and playing them for yourself before you buy them. It's very, very important that you bond with your instrument. The feel of an instrument I find is way more important than sound. So make sure you're going and playing them for yourself. <laughs>
All right, so there you go. There are the five sound samples for the comparison between the Epiphone Les Paul Special Satin E1 and the Gibson Les Paul Tribute. There's, whoa, a major price difference between both of these. And of course, I already did the comparison between this and the Gibson Les Paul Special Tribute, um, which would be a little more accurate. Um, in you know comparison comparing <laughs> comparing them because this is the cheapest les paul from epiphone with humbuckers and that one there was the cheapest gibson with humbuckers but this is a little more up the up the ladder there so i do want to talk about spec differences and stuff like that and um we want to start things off by saying the tribute is not a special so you can see there is a major, major, major difference in thickness. 
The Specials are a slab body. So basically, when you look at any Les Paul that's not a Special or a Junior, if you turn it on its side here, you can see that it's thicker. The reason behind that is the slab of mahogany that's a part of the Special uh, actually has a maple cap to it, a carved maple cap. So what this is, what any special is, is basically the slab without the carve on top. The Epiphone is actually a slab of poplar, whereas the Gibson is a slab of mahogany with a carved maple top. The Epiphone doesn't really have any uh, weight relief in it. Um, you don't really need it. It's a rather thin and light guitar. Um, the only real routings that you have here are for the controls. The Gibson, however, has a lot of weight relief in it. So if you actually took the uh, carved maple top off, you would actually see a whole bunch of holes and stuff like that drilled in uh, the body just to make it lighter, all while keeping the uh, sustain on the guitar. Both of these are also satin finishes. This is... Um, not like a, a super, super fine satin finish or anything like that. It's not rough or anything. Uh, but the Gibson here is satin nitro. So there's a little more resistance when you're feeling things and you feel a little more of the wood grain as well. The Epiphone has a rosewood family board. That's very important to note. So uh, this could be anything from Laurel to um, Akame, which I don't think Akame is part of the rosewood family, but Epiphone will just say that it's a rosewood board or rosewood family board. This particular one here is Akame. It also has the dot inlays. The Gibson here has a mahogany fretboard with the trapezoid inlays neither of which are bound. The Epiphone has a non-intrusive uh, bolt-on neck, and the neck material that's used here is mahogany, whereas the Gibson is a set neck, and it is actually maple. So it's a little snappier feeling. Taking a look at the headstocks here, both have the silk-screened um, logo on the top and the silk-screen Les Paul logo. Uh, the special actually says Les Paul Special, and the Gibson here, because it's not a special model, it says Les Paul model. Looking at the tuners, boy, the tuners here. Um, the Gibson Les Paul Tribute has the Gibson um, Clouson style, the uh, vintage deluxe tuners. I love these tuners. Uh, I keep going back and forth on what I like more, the vintage Clouson style or the more you know modern Grover style. Uh, don't know where I'm at right now. Whereas the Epiphone here has the very flimsy, very light, um, premium covered tuners, I think they call them. They're pretty cheap and easy to replace them, I would recommend. Um, but these ones here, I do find uh, they were also used in the SGE one. They almost require a quarter turn, not all the time, but quite often before it actually grabs the string. So when it comes to finite tuning, you kind of got to get used to it, but it can definitely be done. Taking a look at the pickups, the Epiphone has the uh, Epiphone 700T in the bridge and the 650R. Um, they're rather hollow. Uh, they're not very like completely accurate or anything like that. You can make that work for you for absolutely sure. Just takes a little bit to dial in on your amp, but going from one guitar to the next, you probably want to uh, change your settings on your amp. I didn't do that for this comparison. I thought it was important not to um, because the Gibson here has the 490R and 490T, which are very well balanced pickups. They it sort of accentuate the high mids um, across the spectrum. And they're pretty accurate on anything else. A lot of people kind of uh, discount the 490R and 490T over, you know, more hot pickups or more vintage style pickups. But these are very, very well-rounded pickups. And of course, the bridges, the Epiphone has the Epiphone lock tone um, tunematic and stop bar. I think it's a little bit of a different material used than the like higher end Epiphones because these, the moment that you adjust the saddles here, so adjust your intonation, the whole thing starts to buzz. 
Whereas we have the Gibson Nashville style tunematic and stop bar, which just work really well. The Epiphone has the 10 cent, I like to call them, 10 cent potentiometers in them, uh, one volume and one tone. They are hand soldered and they're actually pretty accurate. Whereas the Gibson here has two volumes and two tones, which is awesome because there's a lot of different tone blending tricks that you can use by putting the uh, guitar into the middle position. Um, but it also has the uh, PCB with it, with the Gibson branded pots, which they're very good, very accurate as well. Um, PCB doesn't make your guitar a computer, please don't think that. There's a lot of people out there that do. It's just a way of saving money so they don't have to pay people to hand solder guitars. So now that we've taken a look at the differences there in the specs, let's pop each guitar in my lap and I'll kind of give you a little bit of information. I'd also like to note here, it's August in Edmonton. It is hot out. I have the worst farmer's tan in the world here, somewhere in a tank top. It's a flowered stormtrooper. I know it's weird, but my daughter likes it. So, sorry. There's no nip slip with this one though, you're fine. Uh, so taking a look at the Epiphone, um, it's kind of top heavy. Not crazy or anything like that. It's not going to have like the whole SG neck dive thing. Just buy a leather strap and all of the day. Um, but it sits really nice. It kind of, it, it has the cutaway here because it's a single cut, whatever. Uh, it has the cutaway here um, for your lap. So it sits really well balanced. And this cut that's here kind of hugs your boob. So you're fine. Um, access to the 22nd fret. I find it a little odd. It's not bad or anything like that. It's actually uh, rather good to, compared to some other access that you can get from different guitars. Um, the bolt-on isn't, you'll know it's a bolt-on neck while you're playing it, but it's not one of those really big ones and it's not way up the, knee, the heel or anything like that. So you'll still have good access to the 22nd fret. You just might have to take use a little bit of practice. We don't have any sharp fret ends or anything like that. Everything seems to be well balanced when it comes to the frets as well. One good thing I do have to say about the single volume and single tone, they're in a really good spot if you like to adjust them while you're playing leads. Because you can actually do that while you're playing with your pinky. And same thing with the toggle switch. Although I think I prefer it up top because you can kind of flick it while you're playing. Um, but yeah, you do have great um, great access to the uh, pots here. One other note I'd like to make on this guitar. This is one of the only guitars that I've ever had the issue where, you know, where it has the kind of break angle to uh, where it goes to the tuning posts and everything like that from the nut. Uh, everyone complains about the G string slipping out of tune and stuff like that. I've, I, I own like 25 or 26 Gibsons. None of them do that. I've played uh, four Epiphones so far and uh, two of them have done it. And it's, it's an ongoing issue. I don't know whether it's uh, the nut or the flimsy tuners here that's causing the issue. But um, basically what I always do is I pull on my strings. So when I tune, I tune up to pitch, then I tug on my strings. And what that does is it takes all the slack off the posts, it reseats it in the nut. Then you have to tune again. I usually do that like three times. And always up to pitch, never down. And usually that guitar is good to go for like an hour to four or five hours or a couple days or whatever. But this one here and the SGE1 did it the same thing. They all had the G-string issue. And of course, moving on to the Gibson here, it sits rather comfortably. Same uh, cutouts here for the, the, you know, the leg and then the boob. Um, and when it's sitting there, it's not top heavy. What you're seeing, because it's moving because it's kind of adjusting to my body, um, but you're not gonna get a lot of neck dive here or anything like that. It's not top heavy. The frets are not sharp whatsoever, and they're still, at least this one here, all my Gibsons, very well leveled. And I find that access to the 22nd fret is a little better on this one. Um, you just don't have that little notch here that kind of gets in the way and that with the body being a little thicker I think it just kind of gives it a little more natural curve to get up to the 22nd fret. That's all I do want to say in regards to the guitars themselves. Um, again I really 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 recommend that you go to the store and play them yourself. That's the best way to 
decide what guitar you want to buy. I, there's been so many times where I've gone into a store thinking I'm going to buy this guitar, I'm definitely going to buy it, and I either walk out with that guitar and another one, or I walk out with a completely different one because I, I see, I like to go and play a whole bunch, I'll see one that I really, you know, catches my eye. And if I bond with it, I may change my mind. So that's very, very, very important. Thanks for watching.